often I get to show off what's going on behind the scenes, but the review I'm doing today lets me share the process I have for creating YouTube videos. And when it comes to TV and video, light is so important. It can absolutely be the difference between a video that looks like you shot it in your basement and one that looks professional. I'm Erin for Best Buy Canada's blog, and the Ultimax Ring Light is a prosumer tool that lets you properly light your subject for greater head and shoulder shots, whether you're shooting stills or video. Now, normally I will bring the product in here and show it off so you can see what it looks like, but I can't do that because I'm actually using it for this video. We're going to take a look at exactly what it can do, how it works, and whether it's a good choice for your home studio. A heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, please hit that like button and do subscribe because it helps us keep making more videos just like these. Ring lights are traditionally used for headshots or portraits, beauty shots, and macro photography. The ring shape fills the subject's face with light, bathing it in an even glow that diminishes shadows and dark areas. So this is what it looks like while shooting with the ring light on. This is what it looks like with the ring light off. The Ultimax Ring Light Kit comes with a bunch of accessories. You'll get the light, of course, which is one piece and has 240 tiny LED bulbs embedded in its face, and there's an extra long cord, which is removable. There's a collapsible stand, too, and two sets of filter diffusers in orange and white. There's really only minimal setup required with this light. You'll attach the light head to the stand by tightening the thumb screw, and these screws are big and heavy-duty thumb screws, which feel like they'll keep it cinched well in place. Plug the AC into the light head and then into the wall and switch it on. Conveniently, the Ultimax ring light is dimmable, which gives you a lot of options for use. You can set it to barely on or full blast bright just by twisting the dial. The head of the light can be tilted and locked into place up to 90 degrees, so you can use it face on or to light something on a table. You can further adjust the light by extending the light stand. It goes from 32 to 72 inches and then measures 19 inches when closed, making it pretty portable as well. For you pros out there, the light's color temperature is 5500 Kelvin. Now, quick sidebar on color temperature because this might help you decide if you do need those diffusers or not. Color temperature is the term for overall color of the light. In essence, the general look or feel of a light when it's turned on. Incandescent bulbs tend to have a yellowish or warmer cast to them, while fluorescence and outdoor sunlight are more blue to varying degrees. So warm white light measures about 2900 Kelvin. This is the incandescent glow of that sort of regular light bulb. Cool white light usually measures about 3000 Kelvin to 4900, and this is most often found in brighter work areas. Daylight and fluorescent lights measure about 5,000 Kelvin and up, and it gives you that bright, bright light that has a slightly bluish tone or a bright white cast. And this type of light is frequently used for commercial lighting. So this light, with its 5,500 Kelvin temperature, will give you that brighter, bluer hue, but you can adjust that by snapping in the colored diffuser or filter plates. There's plenty of options for using this light. Since I use it primarily to shoot YouTube videos, I opted not to use the orange filter on a day-to-day -day basis. Now this is what my video looks like with the diffuser on. This is what it looks like with the diffuser panels off. And this is what it looks like using the orange diffuser panels. You can see it definitely brings a different color tone to the video. So the key thing to note about this ring light compared to some other ring lights is the LED bulbs. It's a bit different, um, totally cool to the touch by the way, it's not like a fluorescent uh, light bulb that gets hot as you use it, this is uh, it's absolutely cold to the touch. It is a bit different to get used to all those little tiny spots of light coming into your face and uh, of course you can brighten it, woo! or dim it way down, so it should deliver exactly the lighting you need. You may have noticed I'm using my light set up in front of my camera and tripod, but there is a shoe on the light head that will let you attach a camera or even a smartphone with an adapter right onto the light itself. Now one other thing about using a ring light, if you don't use the diffuser or you're too close to it, you can get a ring in the reflection of your eyes and trust me, people notice this. I often use this the light without the, like diffuser, the diffuser, so I often get folks off. saying my eyes look kind of creepy. Most often in my home studio here, I set the light to about 30% brightness. I find 100% is way too much, it's, it'll wash you out, and frankly it's hard to see through. If you have too little light, you don't get that nice even glow. So that's 
about where I like to set it. Now I've also got two other lights that I will use here in the studio. Those are fluorescent soft boxes and I've got one on each side here. I'm using those for this today mainly to light the background. I like them for creating a soft even glow but sometimes you do want that more directional light from the front particularly as I mentioned earlier if you're shooting things like portraits or headshots. Now I have another ring light in my studio but this one is a single circular fluorescent bulb. It's not an LED. So is there much difference in the overall light? I would say no, but when you're looking into the camera, um, these bright LEDs here can feel a bit like they're piercing your retinas. You do kind of get used to them and you can dim them of course, but if you need that really strong level of lighting, you're going to have to tough it out. The light stand that comes with the package is lightweight and easy to set up and tighten securely. It also works with other photography equipment like reflectors, soft boxes, different lights and umbrellas. The maximum load is about 5 kilos or 11 pounds, so it's pretty versatile too. Overall, I enjoy having the option of using a ring light in my home studio and finds it brings the front-on wide bright lighting that I can't get from my soft boxes. Plus, with this light's extraordinary brightness and maximum setting of 100%, it's easy to get a good amount of light wherever you need it, even in my otherwise very dark basement studio. The light is easy to set up and use. If there were some aspects that I didn't like, it might be that the light head is pretty big. Uh, it's heavy and it's kind of unwieldy if you're trying to move it. If you don't tighten those thumb screws, uh, it can also start to lean to one side or the other. It is also pretty heavy on this tripod, so you've got to be careful and make sure that the tripod is set up and pretty stable. Now, on its own merits, this light is a good choice if you're looking to improve your photo and video quality but you can definitely find other options out there that will do the job just as well at a lower cost. If you want to read more about it, head over to blog.bestbuy.ca. We've got a full write-up posted there and you can ask us any questions either there on the blog or of course here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing since it does help us keep making more videos that we hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. I'm Erin. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram until the next time at ErinLYYC. You can also check me out at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.